Welcome to another episode of the Rocks of Utah. And there's a little mystery within the rock formations that we're going to be looking at today, and it has to do with the history behind the great flooding of Utah that occurred during the Cretaceous period, in which over several million years, Utah became a coastal state with the development of an interior seaway that split North America into two continents, which began about 100 million years ago. When the coastline changes, geologists have a special terms for these shifts of the coastline. If the coastline moves toward the land, and hence there's an increase of land covered by ocean waters, we call this a transgression. When the ocean waters retreat from the coastline, we call this a regression. There are often large cycles of transgressions and regressions along any coastline over any length of time. And sometimes transgressions can be very extensive, with coastlines reaching deep into the interior of a continent. Based on radiometric dates, around 101 million years ago, a strip of salt water flooded down from Canada, crossing Montana and Wyoming, and reaching the northeastern region of Utah in the first major transgression of the Cretaceous to reach Utah. This ocean filled the low valleys east of the severe mountain ranges, uh, the high volcanic regions of western Utah, Nevada, Idaho, coming down from the east side of the Canadian Rockies of British Columbia across Alberta. Now this sea was kind of similar to the modern Mediterranean Sea, in which a single connection to the larger ocean is through a narrow strait. In this case, up north in Canada. Now, because of this narrow strait being located in the north, the animals living in the sea originated from animals that basically moved down from the higher latitudes near the North Pole from the single opening at the north. The animals in this narrow sea differed greatly from those animals found in the larger oceans during this time. These animals are referred to as endemic animals, since they're not found elsewhere in the global oceans during the Cretaceous. This sea, much like the Black Sea today, was subjected to anoxic conditions and likely had high levels of hydrogen sulfide at depth and a fluctuating level of salinity. Today we're going to try and find some of these endemic animals that lived in this ancient sea between 197 million years ago. The rock layer here in Utah that contains these fossils is called the Maori Shale. Now the mystery of the Maori Shale is which age of the Cretaceous does this rock layer belong into? Um, in most places in the world, the Cretaceous age marine rocks are divided into ages based on the index fossils of ammonite fossils. But the Maori Shale contains fossils not found in other parts of the world, and so geologists have debated what age to place the rock layers into. Is it Albanian or Cenomanian? Or both, with the boundary found somewhere within the rock layer. The other mystery is when did the Maori Sea connect with the rest of the ocean to the south near present-day Texas? Now, evidence from changes in salinity and increased oxygen and water temperatures are hard to see on the outcrop, but we may see an influx of larger southern ammonites occurring in the upper layers of the Maori Shale, marking this connection in the rocks. Now, most geological and geochemical research is pointing toward a connection with the ocean in the south occurring sometime during the late Cenomanian with the Granoris Shale of the Great Plains. But we've not found any fossils here in Utah to support this connection yet. What I'm going to look for is an ammonite called uh, Metagonoceras, which appears in the upper Maori and Granaris Shales to the east. Now, Metagonoceras is a large ammonite which invaded the seaway once it basically reached the southern Atlantic Ocean. 
After the Maori shale was deposited, this seaway retreated, a regression, and as it did so, the upper layers got eroded, which scoured the upper layers of the Maori shale away and resulted in a major unconformity. So any evidence of a possible connection with the Southern Atlantic Ocean may have been lost due to this erosion of these upper layers here in Utah. And there is a good chance that we may not find any of these Metagonoceros ammonite fossils in the Maori Shale, since these layers may have been lost due to this erosion. Over time, however, more terrestrial sediments were then deposited, forming the overlying frontier formation. Fossilized wood is found in the frontier formation, and coal was locally mined from it, indicating an ancient forest existed in this low plain or basin left from the regression of the coastline northeastward. Then, around 92 million years ago, the seaway expanded again to the south, forming a major transgression or shift southward of the coastline. The second event would cover all of eastern Utah in an ocean, reaching down to the Gulf of Mexico and splitting the North American continent into two large islands. This later seaway resulted in the deposition of the very thick Mancos or Pierre Shale rock layer. Now, because these, the second sea during the Tartarian age was well connected to the rest of the ocean, both to the north and to the south, the rock units contain a cosmopolitan marine fauna, including large Inoceramid clams and massive ammonite fossils. I've collected invertebrate fossils from the Maori Shale before, but today I've found a kind of unique place to visit in which I've never visited before. So today, as I head out into the field, I really don't know what we'll find today. the uh, frontier that's those coal beds. Someone was poking around in there. Not a lot, but a little. Um. We're working near the edge of a plunging anticline, which has been eroded down to the older Cretaceous rocks exposing a broad bend of the rock layers, including the Maori Shale and the frontier sandstone. Like a folded newspaper, these pages have been folded, then tilted to the west, and finally eroded, which gives us a number of exposures of the Maori Shale on both sides of these ridges. Anaclines are crests along the folds of rock layers, and this particular anacline was a result of the uplift of the nearby mountain range. Did you find 
find an ammonite? So Felice, where are all the ammonites? I don't know. Did you eat them? I think the fish did. I think the fish ate all the ammonites. There's a lot of dead fish here. How much dead fish there is? A lot? 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 
but sometimes you can get some really nice preservation and I was hoping to find some better preserved ammonites uh, that we could actually identify. Now the importance of these ammonites is that this seaway was salty enough for cephalopods. The Black Sea today is flushed with too much fresh water from the surrounding rivers for cephalopods to live in that large body of water. So we know that the Maori shale was salty and it could support cephalopods like these ammonites. So instead, we are left with a whole lot of fish pieces in these shales. And I find myself actually in the same predicament as Theodore Cockrell 100 years later. Now, Theodore Cockrell was a well-known paleontologist and zoologist who worked mostly in shale units like the Maori. And he's best known for his work on the fossil insects of the fluorescent shale of Colorado. Now, in 1917, he found himself with a large collection of miscellaneous fish scales from a small collection from the Maori shale. And he wanted to see if he could identify what type of fossil there was in this collection, in his collection. Um, now, the United States Geological Survey basically told him that it would be impossible to identify fish only from their scales. But Cockrell continued to work on them and compare the scales with living fish. And he basically came up with a classification system for these scales from the Maori Shale. And in 1918, he published his work. And I have a copy here. So we can uh, see if we can identify some of these scales that we found. Now, before we go on, there are two well-known fossil fish from the Maui Shale, Z. nelion and N. chodius. Now, Z. nelion uh, belongs to a more advanced group of Neoteliaceae clade, which is in close relationship to um, trout and perch fish today. Uh, Enchodius, on the other hand, is closely related to modern salmon, and it featured these, these large, sharp teeth, and like modern salmon, they likely ran up or swam up into the freshwater rivers that fed into the Maori Seaway uh, to lay eggs and spawn. Uh, then as adults, um, they would then swim back, as they grew, swim back down um, and feed and, and sort of get really large in the larger, more salty uh, Maori Seaway. Fire up the lights. All right, so I'm looking through the microscope here and I found this scale. This is actually in um, a slab of shale that has a number of scales. You can see there's a scale up here and there's this big scale. And I, I pointed the microscope to this one because it has these three really kind of prominent ridges that are coming across here. Now, you can tell it's a cycloid scale because it's got these little rings. In fact, you can see it really well on this scale up here where you have these little growth rings. So as the fish would grow, it would have these uh, new growth features on the scale. So pretty cool little plate of armor. Now this one I kind of looked up and using Cockrell's uh, book. And here is... Um, the type, loca uh, type of a scale that's at the Smithsonian. Um, and this is Eri Erythro Erythrinolipus. Leptus. Erythrinolipus. Um, which is uh, one that Cockrell described. And I think this is what, what we're looking at. You can see that there's, and, and looking at his pictures, other than this type one, there is uh, a number of these um, kind of grooves on the scale, which is very characteristic. So um, what's interesting, we only know this taxa from these scales. Uh, we don't have a complete uh, fish um, of this particular um, genus um, and species. So a lot of these scales are not perfect in their 
preservation. Um, they basically are just telling us that we have cycloid scales. Um, now cycloid scales are interesting. Um, here you can see some of those nice growth rings. Um, because these fish are teleos fish and if you were to go back into the Triassic most of the fish that you would find in the Triassic would have ganoid scales and these are all cycloid scales so these are very modern here's the other side of that scale here you can see the ridges really well kind of see what those scales look like um, and you know cycloid scales are really nice for fish because they add quite a bit of flexibility and they're not as heavy as the ganoid scales so there's one cool fossil I found I think this might be part of it's fairly thick so I think it might be part of the opercular uh, try to focus here it's fairly large um, but a lot of these scales are pretty uh, thin, um, so you get kind of the impressions of them in these shales, uh, whereas the bone tends to be uh, much more robust. And so this is maybe part of Aripercula, maybe, um, which is part of the, the gill flap on um, a fish. I was hoping to find some teeth or some other bits and pieces in this material but um, most of this stuff is just um, lots of scales. And thanks to Cockrell can at least give some of these uh, a name. All right, all the fossils are all identified and ready to send off to the museum. Uh, thanks for watching, and if you're interested in videos on Utah geology, uh, paleontology, rocks and fossils, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Thanks!